Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar We'll have a look at the UK weather warnings and some precipitation charts as we do have a yellow warning for thunderstorms That has been issued for tomorrow morning. So we'll have a look at uh, a detailed look at that And then we'll have a look at the medium to long range models and look at the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF And finish up with the GFS ensembles as well so do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if we do have a look at the live radar at the moment, you can see the low pressure that has been sitting out in the Atlantic and approaching over the last few days has finally sort of broken through. And we have seen the initial weather front has been spreading, um, spread through quite far east was now. And we're seeing small um, features coming in behind, giving heavy rain over northern Scotland. We're seeing sort of another frontal system Push into western areas, so parts of Wales, southwest England, into northern and northwest England. And behind it, you can even see some heavy showers and, if not, thunderstorms popping off into, uh, towards Northern Ireland as well. And that's a sign of things to come. Now, remember, this air mass is almost a tropical air mass um, in terms of how moist it is and where it originates from. So when we do get instability, it isn't out of the question. We do see these heavy showers and thunderstorms, and the risk is mainly overnight tonight to around midday tomorrow. So tomorrow morning you could be waking up. So some quite big downpours and some thunderstorms, and maybe even some surface water flooding, and we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail um, in a second. Um, but yeah, it's, just, it's simply because of the location of this air mass. When we do get any, any instability, the energy is there to make these big showers and storms. I do definitely think though the main risk is rain, um, simply because um, I, it's, I doubt we've got enough energy in the atmosphere to get big sort of thundery um, uh, big storms, but it's going to be heavy showers where they pop up um, and maybe form lines at times. So we do have a look at the yellow warning, it's from 4am, so overnight tonight to midday tomorrow, a brief area It'll be a period of heavy rain, thunderstorms, and very gusty winds may affect, uh, may cause some disruption on Wednesday uh, morning. An area of heavy rain and thunderstorms will quickly move eastward, so it's going to be moving through quite quickly. So it shouldn't be um, too impactful, but as we can see here, it could, um, it will see a spell of rain while some places will be affected by thunderstorms, bringing a brief period of heavy rain, lightning, and strong gusty winds with hail also affecting some spots. Gusts will tend to peak at 40 to 50 miles per hour, whilst very unlikely in any one place, much stronger winds are possible, and there could potentially be some damage. High impact, low likelihood. So there's a lot of uncertainty with this. I've seen some people point out that there's the potential. We see funnel clouds or maybe an isolated tornado because of the, the vorticity within the atmosphere, i.e. the rotation um, and energy. So, got to keep an eye out for that. Um, again, it could be a massive bust tomorrow. We could just see some heavy rain. Or we could see some violent thunderstorms as seen by this weather warning. It affects mainly southwestern areas into Wales, into the Midlands, into parts of East Anglia. Have excluded a bit in the southeast um, for London area as well. But there is still the potential of sort of seeing some heavy rain push in through there. So you'd first do have a look at WRF, and if we do have a look at Cape just for a second, just to see what we could um, be seeing in terms of Cape, you can see over the course of the evening, this evening, we've got Cape over Northern Ireland, that's where we're seeing those storms and heavy showers pop up at the moment, as you can see by the radar at the start of the video. As we head through tonight, you can see that inst instability pushing up, um, and pushing through the country, it's not major. Um, we've got we've well, over the past summer we had a lot more Cape at times, but simply because of the amount of moisture in the air, this Cape combined with the instability, it all could give a recipe for something interesting tomorrow morning. Now we haven't been looking at this for a long period of time. Really, only has cropped up in the last 24, 36 hours, simply because this this sort of um, instability um, is known. Uh, but exactly what's going to happen with this low pressure system, it changes every single run. So only really in the last couple of days um, has this become of any interest. And I only really thought about uh, sort of reporting on the charts of thunderstorms since we've got a yellow warning put in force. So obviously, the Met Office do believe there is the potential for some significant impacts from this. It does spread eastwards. And then generally, you can see behind that, the cold front does sweep through things going colder from the north. If we do have a look at the precipitation, um, 
If we go have a look at precipitation, you can see at the moment we've got heavy showers pushing through. And as we head through this evening, that weather front eventually does push through. And then you see this mass of quite heavy rain and showers and storms breaking out throughout tomorrow morning. Uh, into the early afternoon as it does spread through we can see some more of heavy rain through tomorrow night across southern areas we can see the cold front across scotland potentially for some heavy snowfall over the scottish mountains as that spreads out southwards we can even see some snow over some northern hills as well in england um, and then repeated showers over north scotland as that weather front pushes through and everywhere goes into the colder air mass so you do have a look at the UK Met Office run, see how that does compare to the other, uh, to the WRF. You can see um, heavy rain spreading through at the moment, that does eventually clear, and then we see these showers and storms break out throughout tomorrow morning. Again, moving through quite quickly, so it shouldn't be too many impacts, but if you do get caught out in one of these around rush hour, it might be pretty miserable out there. Eventually does clear through, we have a lot of sunshine and showers, and potential some more heavy persistent rain across the south as well, sort of a channel low. It would be very interesting to see if this were in winter, because we'd be seeing heavy snowfall with it, with cold air coming in from the north. But it is way too early, and we do not have that cold air available to our north yet. Um, but this is sort of a, a, a teaser sort of system. That if we did see this in December, January, February, we'd be talking about potentially burying some of the southern counties in deep snow. But it's just going to be heavy rain for... Um, for much of Wednesday evening into Thursday. As we move through that cold front eventually sweeps through and we just see quite widespread smacking of showers, especially in the north and on sort of northwest um northwest northwest facing facing coasts. And we could be seeing some snow showers, some sleet showers, wintry showers in general over some hills and especially over the mountains and eventually by the weekend, we see another low pressure system move through by Sunday with more weather fronts. So if you now do have a look at the GFS, you can see the low pressure approaching from the west at the moment. Beyond that, we go into the northerly winds, chilly air spread through the whole country. Could be seeing some very cold temperatures, potentially over Scotland and northern England at times with frost for a good few days. Elsewhere, just a good few uh, degrees below average. And we could even be seeing like a 10 to 15 degree temperature drop over the next few days with in southern areas today getting up to around 20, 21 degrees with the warm moist air. Not feeling that warm considering a cloud around um, and showers around, but uh, still pretty warm temperatures for October. Beyond that, the uh, northerly wind eventually collapses and we see another weather front pushing from the west. And beyond that, for the last five days of October, it generally just looks westerly and to be honest a little bit mild as well with the general um, theme of west to southwesterly winds and right towards the end of the run we are putting in southerly winds but the temperatures aren't that great to the south there aren't that great um, upper air conditions so even though um, synoptically it looks a little bit warmer it really won't feel too warm it'll just generally probably be around average so if you do now have a look at the GMs here that does compare to the other uh, to the other models, you can see at the moment northerly wind pushing through by the end of this week, going chilly, and beyond that just westerly winds, um, and again jet stream heading right over top, um, and you can see right coming from the southwest a zonal flow, um, and potentially in the south staying quite mild, um, but again what we do see showers cloud it'll be a little bit chillier than that um, especially the surface but upper airs in the south looking really quite warm so we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with that um, still could it still could mean temperatures into the high teens at times but it all really depends on sunshine cloud amounts and rainfall because I'd much rather 15 16 degrees with nice beautiful sunshine feeling pleasant than 19 20 degrees feeling a bit muggy cloudy drizzly so um, we've just got to really, when that gets into the short range, see what exactly what sort of pattern we could be seeing. If we have a look at the ECM DF, see how that does compare, you can see again, northerly wind pushing through, and then it's generally, again, another westerly theme. A little bit more of a northwesterly theme with air masses originating more from the North Atlantic. And you can see once this low clears through, we're going to be going to a bit of a polar maritime air mass, but still very similar synoptics with the westerly wind, just slightly different direction um, of the air mass. 
So yeah, looking quite unsettled, and at this stage, Halloween is looking unsettled as well. I don't see any break in these patterns, really. Um, there's no massive sign of any big ridge of high pressure pushing up. Um, it may be mild for some in the south, but for others it could be quite chilly, um, and there could be a lot of rain, wind, and showers around. So, well, of course, we'll get closer to Halloween um, over the next few days. It'll get into within the 7 to 10 day time frame. And then we'll be able to get a bit more of a, an estimate of what we could be seeing. But at this stage, it doesn't look particularly encouraging if you're wanting really dry weather and really mild weather as well. If we're going to have a look at, well, if we now have a look at the GFS ensemble to finish the video up, you can see at the moment really quite warm upright temperatures, around 12 degrees at 850 HPA. A lot of precipitation as well as the temperature does drop over the coming days. It does drop good. 15 plus degrees down to around minus 4, minus 5 degrees at 850 HPA for a sort of short period of time, maybe a couple of days. Um, so, yeah, like 24, 48 hours before it does go back to around average, sit around average for a few days, and then generally towards the last few days of October, we're around or maybe above average. GFS operational is a little bit of an outlier, quite far above average, but most are going around or above the, the 1981 to 2010 mean with still a lot of precipitation signals around no massive spikes at this stage but still a decently frequent precipitation signal which does mean it's going to be probably unsettled and most of these ensembles are going for the theme of a west southwesterly wind similar to that gfs just not quite as warm with the upper air temperatures if we have a look at sea level pressure you can see at the moment we've got weak uh, low pressure uh, but that is because the centre of flow is out of the Atlantic still. But as that centre of flow moves through, by tomorrow evening, overnight into Thursday, you can see we sort of drop out to around 990 millibars before rising once again towards the weekend around 2000 and, uh, 1,020 millibars. And then we generally go weak low pressure for the foreseeable future with a lot of up and down within some of the ensemble members, some going really quite deep in terms of low pressure. Um, and... Yeah, we'll just keep an eye. It does look unsettled, though. No real signal within hardly any of these ensembles for it going really high pressure. I'd say 1,030 millimars and above, you'd be talking about really dry conditions. But we're really only seeing that in a few spots in some of the really long-range ensembles. Not really seeing it any, any, in in the majority of them in any of the decent time frames so yeah it's not looking great if you want anything dry but of course it is october it is autumn so it's not out of the unusual to be getting a lot of these westerly winds if you have a look at glasgow you can see again very similar in terms of um in terms of what we're seeing in london with weak low pressure at the moment getting down from 990 millibars over the next 24 hours then rising up to around 1020 millibars dropping back down to about 1000 millibars and sort of hovering there for the next week to 10 days beyond that quite a lot of scattering in the longer term but it is generally still looking quite unsettled um and there could be a few stormy runs in there but generally it is just looking unsettled with the lows the sense of the lows at least staying further westwards um and a bit further northwards as well and we're just getting the weather fronts and some of the gusty winds at, at times if we do have a look at the 850 hpa temperature and precipitation lastly for glasgow you can see at the moment a good 15 degree temperature drop is coming it's around 10 degrees at the moment it'll be minus five in the next 48 hours beyond that it rises slowly back up to around average by the 23rd 24th with weather fronts pushing in with low pressure uh, and then beyond that it hovers around average maybe a touch above average at times or maybe a little bit below average at times it all depends exactly on what happens with the warmer colder sectors of the low pressure systems but it does look very very unsettled um and generally um, not particularly pleasant um, a lot of precipitation signals and temperatures don't look great either um, especially because talk about these southwesterly winds the areas that will see the potential for a bit warmer conditions will be sort of southern england where we do escape the rain and potentially get some of the warmer um, mid-atlantic air further northwards even though we're going to get getting potentially getting a little bit of warmer air from the southwest it will feel still quite chilly with those westerly winds and a lot of rain around so looking quite quite typical autumnal conditions coming up over the next few weeks well apart from the very warm air today and the cold front we're seeing in the next few days beyond that um, for the last week of october into 
or at, and into the start of November, um, it is looking at this stage very autumnal. Things can still change, of course. We can still see flips in these ensembles. And of course, November is still a good um, 12, 13 days away. So things are very uncertain. But at this stage, the signal is something very autumnal. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe on you. And I'll see you again for another video soon.